Microsoft Fabric has been announced, but what about DBAs? How do we interact with it? How do we make tables? How do we use SQL Server Management Studio? Those answers and more next on Tales from the Field. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. If this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Tuesdays, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature articles, data, blog, videos, whatever, from the creators within the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. On Monday and Tuesday, we drop our MS Tech Bits, which is information that we've discovered in working with a product group at Microsoft, working with customers, or anything that we found that we think is helpful. You're watching one of those right now. Let's get over to the content and what we're here for. I'm going to start out in my Trident workspace that we created in our previous demo, and I'm going to go into my baseball data warehouse, and I'm going to copy the SQL connection string. This is going to give me the capability to connect via SSMS or whatever tool I'd like. I go to SSMS, I make a connection to my database engine, I paste it in, I click connect, and I make sure and authenticate through. And wow, look at this. I am connected immediately to my Fabric workspace, to my data warehouse there. I can open up my baseball data warehouse. Now, one of the things I've done is I've dropped all the tables. So you're going to notice that these tables are empty because part of the problem that I have is I want to be able to create my tables. You see, I'm using CSVs and those CSVs don't have header files on there. I don't want to have to rewrite these. Some of my tables are quite large. I've got over you know 96 columns in one table. So if I do a quick refresh, I can see that sure enough, my T-SQL has worked and I was able to create those tables. Now I can load data into those tables in my data warehouse. I've already created my CD load dimension dim date. You saw that in our previous video with Niraj. I've got another one that I need to load. I've got my baseball data, my teams, and my rosters. If I go to baseball, I look at source. One of the key differences is I'm using a wildcard path. I have thousands of files I need to I need to load. And so I'm specifying that it's a CSV. And then you can see as I'm loading the data, those headers aren't there. But don't worry about that. Those headers will be there because they're in the table I've created. And so I'm going to load my flat file data in. And you can see here's all these columns. Like I said, 96 just in this first table. And that's not even including my other tables. If I go and I take a look at my teams, you can see I'm doing the same thing, destination path. I've selected my destination of the table I've created in my data warehouse. And then here's the key, the mappings. The mappings are what makes all of this work. Let me clear this out and show you how easy this is. I can just click import schema. It's going to read my column names from my tables and boom, I am ready to go to be able to run this. So you can see it pulled everything in. I've done the same for my baseball rosters, wildcard, destination, going to the table I've created in my data warehouse. And then in the mapping, the mapping is all set up. So what do we do now? We run this thing. So this is going to run. I'm going to speed up the process for it to run a little bit. But I want to make sure that you see that just like any ingestion pipeline, we have the capability to come in and see the activity as we begin to load. And this is no small data set, right? I've got over 12 million rows just within this one table. And I'm going to load three different tables here. Now my teams table and my rosters table are a lot smaller, but once I have everything loaded, I can come back over to my data warehouse and show you that these tables are in place. In Fabric, it's going to have loaded all these tables that we created and I can click on any one of them. And as you can see, I can get a data preview. I can also come back over it into SSMS. And if I wanna do a quick count to be able to see the rows that I've brought in from baseball stats, I can see how quick that this returns. And if you look at this sub second to bring back my count for 12 million rows, I can also use a CTAS statement, create table as select. Notice I don't need to specify a distribution and I'm going to create a team's name, a distinct team's name table, but also I need my box score and I need to parse this data. So this statement is fairly complex. I'd written this for my Snaps Analytics workspace, but just by getting rid of the width distribution, I can come over and I can run this script to create my box scores. So let's go ahead and let's do just that. I'm gonna execute this. I'll skip a little forward in time. This took about a minute to run, but I can refresh and see, boom, my team box scores has been created. Now, if I come back over and I refresh in my data warehouse, I can see there's my team box scores as well. 
if I click in it in my Fabric workspace, there's my data loaded. So as a DBA, I've got the capability to interact. Now let's take it a step further. I'm going to go back to my workspace. I'm going to go to show all because what I want to create is a lake house. I am going to click on this lake house and create my lake house. We'll call it something simple, lake house underscore baseball, because this is what I'm working with. And I want to be able to grab that data. Normally, I'd have to import this, right? No, no, no. I can go to my Microsoft One Lake. I can link my baseball data warehouse, and then I can select from the tables. Now, I could bring in all my DBO tables, everything within a particular schema. I'm just going to select team box scores to show you I can get a specific. I can be choosy if I want to. I create that link, and there's my table, my linked table right there. I can see an endpoint was created. I add a couple of other tables, but here's the great thing. If I want to use this in Spark, I can go and create a new notebook. And then I just go over and click on my team box scores. I can load this directly into Spark and then I can run this. And what I'll find is I have access to this data and I have not made multiple copies of this data and I can access it within my data warehouse. I can access it within my one lake, I can access it within my lake house and run Spark against it. Wow, we just covered a lot, right? This is an amazing tool that allows us to be able to get rid of that data deduplication problem that we've often found when moving data from one place to another to be able to begin interacting with it in multiple different services. We also discuss how if you're a DBA, there's a place for your script. There's a way for you to connect via SSMS. The work that you have done on your Snaps Analytics workspaces uh, very easily translates over to what we're doing in Fabric. Okay, did you like what you saw? You know where we like to keep this going? In the comments down below, please sound off. Do you want more of this? Do you have any questions? We wanna help you out. Okay, thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. Until next time, Take care of yourself and take care of one another. Have a great week. Bye, everybody. All you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education.